without any further ado, we are so pleased uh, to have His Excellency President Mohammed Irfan Ali to address uh, this uh, group. Um, and we are, thank you so much for joining us, Your Excellency, uh, with all the dynamic activities in your country. I will get out of your way and leave it to you. John, thank you very much. Uh, I hope everyone is hearing me. First of all, uh, I want to thank the organizers for their kind invitation uh, to address this uh, forum. There are just a few points that I think I want to make in relation to uh, investment in the region and how we see uh, the investment unfolding in keeping with the policy agenda and keeping with the agri investment guide and the, the focus of the region on food security. It is important, I think, first of all, I, I want to thank my minister and all those who have already uh, contributed. But I, I want to also send to the forum two uh, publications I just completed, one on food security in uh, the region, that is from crisis to opportunities. And that uh, publication highlights the problem, the entire problem, the ecosystem, and how do we move from those problems in creating opportunities in the region. I think it's very essential that uh, the electronic copy of that be shared among all those who are participating here today because it looks at the entire region. It gives country-specific information. It gives country-specific opportunities. It gives country-specific challenges and country-specific policies uh, in terms of investment in agriculture. So uh, I will have my Minister of Agriculture share that electronic uh, publication with you. The second publication that I did that uh, I've completed only a week ago is on the post-COVID Ukraine, Russia-Ukraine uh, war and its impact on the region, the combination of the two. It's entitled uh, Ticking Time Bomb. And that, again, highlights the inflationary pressure, the economic pressure, the social pressure, the financial pressure on the region in terms of uh, agriculture. But my friends, this morning I want to make a few points. And I want to start by speaking about whether we should speak about agri-investment <clears throat> or speak about investment into a highly integrated food production system. You see, historically, we have a very narrow view of agriculture and a very dated view of agriculture. Some people believe that agriculture is still a process of persons being in a field, sitting in a field, working in a field. Agriculture has changed. And with these changes comes the opportunity to invest, comes the opportunity to modernize, comes the opportunity to transform. And I want to speak a bit about that and how we are getting around that and, and how the opportunities can come in relation to that. So today, I want us to re-examine the way in which we are capturing the subject matter. And I want to position to the forum that we capture it under the heading and this is where we are going. A highly integrated food production system. Now, if we are talking about investment into a highly integrated food production system, it is quite different from investing in agriculture. Agriculture is just one component of the ecosystem of the highly integrated food production system. So I want to get that out there, first of all, that what we are speaking about this morning is investment in a highly integrated food system in the region of which agriculture or food production is part of that uh, um, system. Now, when we speak about a highly integrated food production system, we are speaking about an entire ecosystem, an ecosystem that has to support the food production system. And what what are some of the things that are important to this ecosystem? First of all, when we speak about investment, we're not speaking about 
<clears throat> and many people uh, uh, in agriculture don't put this as priority. But investors are still looking for return. When we speak about investment, we're not speaking about charity. We're speaking about creating a business and economic model that works, that works for the investor, work for the people, and work for the country in the context of what we want to achieve. And that context is food security and to create a high value market. So what is it we want to position? <clears throat> or where can we position the Caribbean market? The Caribbean market must be positioned, and as, as we're saying now, positioning the, positioning the market uh, in a high value, as a high value specialized market. Because of scale and because of our location and our own competitive advantages, we have a great opportunity of positioning this market as a high value specialized market. Market. Whether we're talking about honey, spices, aquaculture, cocoa, coffee, uh, barley, corn, soya, fresh fruits and vegetables, high value fruits and vegetables. So how do we create the ecosystem and how do we create the framework to enable the positioning of the Caribbean market, the CARICOM market, as a high value specialized market? That's the second context that I want to bring. So there are a few things that I want to put to you where this policy decision will take us and the type of opportunity it will bring along uh, for us. First of all, one of the critical issues in creating the ecosystem and looking at a high value market is transport and logistics. This has been the greatest bugbearer for interregional trade. This has been the greatest bugbearer for the movement of, of product and produce within the region itself. So there is tremendous opportunities in the transport and logistics aspect of the food production system, beginning from primary production to uh, highly specialized value-added production. Now, what do we want to do when it comes to transport and logistics? It is important for you to understand that we want to create a regional food hub. But as it is, all those who are connected with the distribution of food are looking north, coming down. So what we are positioning now, the ecosystem to do for us, is to look at the opportunity that exists in northern Brazil and to re-engineer the food production system in which we start by utilizing the potential of northern Brazil through Guyana, up through the region, and into North America. The transports, logistics, value-added distribution, the entire reorganizing of that network to meet our food security needs initially and to give us the opportunity now to become a major player in the transport and logistics and distribution business for food coming out of north of uh, the northern Brazil. Now, food can get through the Caribbean, get through Guyana in the Caribbean and up north in less than 72 hours coming out of north Brazil if that transportation ecosystem, logistics, and regional food hub is invested into with the right technology, the right facilities, the right sanitation, uh, sanitary facilities. Uh, as against what exists now is that either very, very strong production go to waste in northern Brazil, or if it has to come back to north market and come down back through the system to the Caribbean, in their existing transport and logistics system, you're talking close to three weeks, 21 days. Versus 72 hours. So that is the first positioning I want to put to you. What constitutes the regional food hub, the infrastructure that must come, must come in supporting that food hub, supporting the transport and logistic opportunity, the distribution opportunity, the value-added opportunity that will come. Next. So I dealt with transport and logistics. 
the regional food hub, the infrastructure. In the regional food hub, in Guyana, for example, we launched a program recently where we start our production of corn and soya. By the time we get up to uh, 2025, 2026, we'll be not only nationally secure, but we will be in a position where we can produce all the corn and soya for feed production throughout the region. Recently, as a region and here in Guyana, we are investing heavily on uh, technology and on examining the viability for other crops, for example, wheat, barley. We have uh, a lot of land that can have high production of barley that can satisfy the entire regional demand and go all the way up north and take a big share of that market. So the re-engineering, logistics, transport and distribution, the regional food hub. Then the post-harvest losses. How do we invest in technology? The opportunities that invest uh, that exist in investing in post-harvest losses. How do we ensure that we reduce post-harvest losses? How do we apply the best methodology, technology, uh, investment in storage facility, warehousing, coal houses, value added, so that we can look at the the, the huge losses, post-harvest losses that we have, and convert that into opportunities. Then. The whole issue about value added. And let me say this. The, the food, integrated food production system is changing. You don't need 100 acres of land to produce X uh, tons of potato. With technology, you can now produce the same amount of potato that you produce on 100 acres of land on less than five acres of land. So it is how do we... One of the great challenges in the region is the vulnerability to climate change. So resilience and sustainability as part of the investment parameter in this integrated food production system is important. Whether it's hydroponic houses, greenhouses. So applying technology, bringing now that sometimes have a higher capital cost, but a long-term return, and the issue of resilience and sustainability becomes important in justifying the investment up front. So that is another big area. How do we invest in the right technology, in the use of uh, tunnel houses, for example, for poultry, uh, greenhouses, shade houses? How do we use these uh, opportunity in creating value, expanding market, and producing high value crop? Because it must be a targeted, high value crops that we're looking at. Whether it's the berries, the strawberries that we're importing, the grapes that we're importing, whether it's the spices, uh, green leafy vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, all of these things can be produced in high volume uh, and, and combating the issue of, um, combating the issue of uh, sustainability and resilience, vulnerability. Then in aquaculture, we have tremendous opportunities that exist in aquaculture. Here in Guyana, we are four times more competitive than Brazil, for example, in aquaculture because of the volume of fresh water, brackish water. We have enough uh, natural asset in terms of aquaculture to supply not only the Caribbean, but to make a major dent in the North American and European market when it comes to aquaculture. And a lot of investors are already, already looking into this direction. So we spoke uh, value added, uh, but the, one of the major issues is the cost of energy, and that is coming down drastically in the region. There is more investment in renewable, and we have to create a new brand of marketing for the region that speaks to what you achieve in terms of buying products out of the region, the social marketing. So building out that marketing arm for a specialized type of produce and product that we want to put on the market. Technology, training, and development is another big area. One of the things that we are focusing also in the region is how we can ensure that there is great involvement of women and youth in the integrated uh, food production system. So that too brings with it a number of opportunities. You see, food and nutrition security in the region is another big area also. It is not only 
the production of food, but the looking at nutritional value, looking at how we integrate this into our social program, and having the right policy mix that allows us to utilize the food not only uh, based on cost, but based on nutritional value. How do we link that to healthcare improvement in healthcare, improvement in life expectancy, improvement in quality of life? All of this comes as part of that educational program, the training and development program in that uh, food, highly integrated food production system I'm speaking of. Then, <clears throat> economy. Right now, we have, we have exposed ourselves because of the high food import bill, 70% of our food being imported into the region. We have exposed, exposed ourselves to the vulnerability of high inflation, the inflationary pressure. We have seen that, and the impact it had in our economy. It set back our social program. So in combating the volatility of, and, and movement of prices on the global market, it is not only important, it is absolutely necessary that we build our full food production capacity in the region so that we don't suffer from these type of inflationary pressure that adds so many other problems on our society. Then uh, we have, of course, the, the, the goal of reducing our food import bill by 25% by 2025, and that is an uh, uh, import bill of about $6 billion. So you're coming in to invest at a time when there is a consensus within the region uh, of supporting uh, investment in this integrated food production system, on giving fiscal incentives, on encouraging sometimes even co-investing to help us to achieve uh, these targets. Now, the, the Caribbean itself is well positioned. As I said, our geographic location offers you opportunity. Our uh, trade, collective trade agreement offers you a market size in terms of preferential uh, trade of more than 450 million people. So that alone also gives you a market that is much wider uh, than the CARICOM market. And of course, the world needs food. The global growth and increase in the world population, which is expected to reach 8.5 billion people by 2023, will demand greater quality of food. And more people going into the middle class, whether it's in India or China, there will be a change in the eating pattern. And changes in the eating, eating pattern changes the local production system, which does not necessarily align with global production system. That is why, as the global import uh, was estimated to have increased by more than 10%, that is the global food import bill uh, grew by uh, 10 percent and reach almost U.S. two point two trillion dollars. That is by 20. That is by the end of 2023. That is what is projected. So global demand for food is not shrinking. Global demand for food is not uh, shrinking in any way. So the the, the, the demand will necessitate necessitate supply, and it changes uh, in terms of the formation of the demand and what constitute that demand. Also must be taken into consideration. Now, uh, the, the, the attractiveness of the Caribbean region, I spoke about that, our geographic location, the direction in which we are going, the type of incentives we are offering is second to none. Now, we are also a region that produces a wide variety of fruits, vegetables, spices, now fruits, natural juices, an uh, emerging market that is, going to be ha that is going to have great potential, coconut water, the entire coconut value chain, all of these are tremendous opportunities. I said about, I spoke about aquaculture recently. Our preference, our not, I was, I should say preferential, but our trade agreement with North America and Europe, our proximity to Europe and North America, all of this offers competitive advantage for investing uh, in this region in agriculture. So I know that the minister spoke. I'm very sorry that I had to occupy so much more of your time. In, in speaking about some of these issues. But I just wanted to give some context and to say to you that we are not talking about investment of agriculture alone here, but an integrated food production system. Uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity, and I look forward to working with all of you. Thank you very much.